We are a society where if you go look on the websites of our universities, you can find within three clicks the diversity figures of the student body at those universities. You can click for hours and you will never find the income of the students who go to those universities or the income of their families. So on the one hand, we've had this tremendous commitment to and a certain amount of success in promoting an anti-racist agenda, of which of course I completely approve, and promoting a cultivating diversity agenda. But during the exact same period, the last 30 years, we've had another set of social developments, and that is the US, which was never among the most economically equal societies in the world, 30 years ago we were way behind, let's say, the Scandinavian countries, has in fact become much less equal than it was then. If you look at a thing called the Gini coefficient, which is one standard measure the economists have of economic inequality within a nation, you will see that we have risen by leaps and bounds. And we are long since past France and past Germany, and we have actually, I think, caught up right now with China, and if we just work a little harder, we'll soon be as unequal as Mexico. So these two things have taken place at the same time. The question is, what's the relation between them? The central argument of my book is that one of the major, one of the major culprits in allowing this system of series of events to take place has been American liberalism. Why? Because American liberalism has increasingly focused itself, I would say not just increasingly, but in some senses ex uh, obsessively, focused itself on problems of diversity and discrimination while neglecting with remarkable success problems of inequality. That is, we love the problem of racism and we love the problem of racism because solving the problem of racism just requires us to be better people. And if we're here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, or for that matter, in any university I go to, we always are the better people, and it requires us to be better people to get other people to be better people, to be, i.e., more just like us. We like the problem of racism. We like trying to solve the problem of racism. And we like it a lot better than trying to solve the problem of economic inequality. And it's not hard to see why we like it better, because, of course, solving the problem of economic inequality involves more than just getting rid of our racism. Inequality, actually, economically, has nothing whatsoever to do with our attitudes. It has nothing whatsoever to do with whether we are appropriately moral people. The problem of inequality cannot be solved by us getting rid of the way we feel about poor people. What poor people want from us is not what different races want from us. Different races want from us, whoever we are, our respect. Poor people do not want or need our respect. Poor people want and need our money. 